Let's talk about the latest on Jaden Davis. Jim Harbaugh, Jaden Davis, really Michigan's quarterback of the future, and all eggs in one basket at this point. They didn't bring in a high-level recruit in 2022, kind of a couple project guys. Didn't bring in a quarterback in 2023 yet. Maybe that could change. Got two weeks till signing day. And Jane Davis is all the bread in the basket there for him in 2024. Jim Harbaugh, Jane Davis going to talk Wednesday night. And then uh, but he's got a lot of suitors out there. He sure does. He's going to visit North Carolina, Mac Brown. They've got maybe the highest in favorite in Drake Mayer, one of the highest in favorites going into next year. They've certainly put out NFL-level quarterbacks under Mac Brown. And then uh, other guys coming to town, right? Ryan Day and their new uh, their new their quarterbacks coach, the new offensive coordinator as well there at Ohio State. They're visiting him this week. Dabo Sweeney, they've got his new offensive coordinator, Clemson's coming this week. Dabo himself is heading down to uh, Charlotte to visit Jaden Davis uh as well. So a lot of competition for things are heating up. It doesn't seem like it's like a Michigan and maybe South Carolina, I don't know, Clemson, whoever the battle has been. Georgia looks like everybody's coming for Jaden Davis. I think he's the highest rated quarterback recruit in 2024 or 2023. So a lot of people pursuing him. All right, guys, we are presented by Manscaped. In just a few moments, I'll tell you about Manscaped's new product line. It is a beard trimmer and it is outstanding. So make sure you stick with us. Go to manscaped.com, the best male grooming products in the game. Use promo code GOBLUE, 20% off and free shipping. Michigan's 2023 off-season training starts on Monday. So we are going to have all kinds of inside access. Who's looking the part? Who's uh, faster than ever? Who is putting in the time, showing up at 4 a.m.? for the uh, 4 a.m. for the off-season workouts, all those sorts of things. So kind of talking about that in a second. I got a position switch I want to talk about and some injury news for you. So we're going to dive into some news and some rumors, but we're going to start the show with some Jim Harbaugh stuff. Before we do, we're in 2023, right? The, the season's over. Georgia wins the national title. They were the, the most dominant national championship or dominant bowl game in college football history. Will Michigan be ranked in the top two in the preseason polls? If you guys have seen last week and then uh, this past, uh, I think it was a uh, show on Monday, uh, I dabbled with my top 10, put out last week my top 25 going to next year. I think Georgia's going to be the consensus number one because they won the national title such dominant fashion. If Michigan made the national title game and was competitive with Georgia, even if they lost, I think Michigan could have been number one because of what they've got coming back. But as such, Georgia, in the dominant fashion, they won that game. They will be number one. Will Michigan be number two in the, in the preseason polls, or top two, I should say? Give me a Y or an N. The live chat, Chris says, uh, Chris Nurberg says no. Ethan says yes. Barron says no. They'll probably be number one. Well, that's still top two, Ethan. Sean says no. Henry Moore says no as well. So not a super optimistic, uh, optimistic crew. Uh, Sean Smith Schmidt said yes. Uh, I think I already mentioned something else, though. So let me know in the live chat and in the comments. Will Michigan be a top two ranked team in the 2020 preseason poll? 2023 preseason poll. Is Ward Manuel on the hot seat? And that might be a surprising question to someone who doesn't follow it, doesn't really care about some athletic director, administrator who doesn't have a direct impact on what happens with any of the programs. But it's an interesting question to consider, given what Jim Harbaugh, Santa Ono, and the communication from the program that's happened over the past week. So Ward Manuel, Jim Harbaugh, you don't need any inside info, like you see at the bottom of the screen, to connect the dots that they aren't on good terms. You go back to 2020, um, Jim Harbaugh, they, they stretched it out 2020 all through COVID, et cetera. They didn't give him a new contract. He had two years left in his contract. Then the disastrous 2020 season happened, two and four. Now Harbaugh's going to his last year, Michigan they probably could have fired him, and no one would have blamed him there. But Ward Manuel kind of, he said, Jim, we'll keep you. I don't want to keep you as our coach, but we didn't think you'd take a half you know, pay cut down to $4 million bucks. We're making eight, now you're making four. Oh boy, what's some incentives for you? You can make like six or seven. That's what happened. I think it hurt Harbaugh. I think he, he did it because he didn't have any other options, but I think it was a gut punch for him. Now, here's what Santa Ono, Michigan's uh, new president, right? Uh, uh, he's been on the job for just a few months. I think Mark Schlissel, the, the prior guy, was a complete schmuck, so I'm glad there. He says, he just got the phone Jim Harbaugh. Jim sure the great news to me that he's going to remain the head coach of the Michigan Wolverines. Fantastic news. How about this part, though? This is the part they don't talk about, Jack. I have communicated that to our athletic director, Ward Manuel. Um, if you're in an organization and you're kind of like one of the, the top guys and you got a direct boss and you got like the president or the CEO of the company, whatever it is, if you're going around him and you said, hey, I'm going to stick around, I'm not going to quit, and he tells your boss, how about this statement from Jim Harbaugh? On his future, I love the relationships that I have with Michigan, the coaches, the staff, the families, the administration, the president, Santa Ono, and especially the players and their families. My heart is the University of Michigan. 
I once heard a wise man say, don't try to out happy, happy. I don't know who said that, but it's a pretty good quote. I've heard it before as well. Um, guys, who didn't he talk about there? Who did uh, Jim Harbaugh not mention there? He mentioned Santa Ono by name, but did he mention Ward Manuel, his boss, who's supposed to be negotiating this contract with? He didn't. I think there is a rift there that uh, needs to be considered. We're going to dive more of that in there. Hold on a second. We got some breaking news here. Breaking news. Jack Lottery telling me, boo, 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 here in the Michigan Football Report. Breaking news. Attention to all bearded gentlemen. Manscaped has launched a new beard grooming kit. We'll toss the link there. Manscaped.com. Uh, promo code GOBLUE for 20% off and free shipping in the live chat. Folks, are you tired of multiple products to maintain your beard? Look, I used to have a beard a couple days ago. I trimmed this bad boy up. I went a little close, but I did it with my new Manscaped beard trimmer. The luxury beard hedger pro kit from Manscaped, the complete beard maintenance kit, has everything you need for the modern man on the go. From trimming to treatment, this kit has it all. It includes a beard hedger, a uh, AC adapter and USB-C cable to charge it, beard shampoo, beard conditioner, beard oil, beard balm, and a travel bag. Plus, as a special bonus, you'll receive a free beard accessory pack with a beard brush, beard comb, and beard scissors. This thing is sick. The beard hedger was designed with a unique cutting angle to have a built-in comb to lie uh, to lift flat lying hairs for smooth single stroke trimming. And for a limited time, you can get 20% off it just launched yesterday folks 20 percent off and free shipping on the entire package or you can just get this bad boy right here this thing is so awesome i trim my beard on monday look you see that you feel that vibration you feel that oh yeah this bad boy is sick and it's got all kinds of uh, accessories here with manscape promo code go blue no spaces look how nice this packaging it's like the apple of men's products it's just an amazing package they have got little instructions there. They got a holder for your beard, Tim. Then you've got this bad boy. Hey, you know, you got a scruffy beard. You got to do one of these. One of these guys who's kind of like got like, you know, looks like you know, pubes or something. You've seen those kind of guys, Jack. You got to keep it real there. You've got grooming stuff in there. Manscaped is doing it right. Beards are, they're a thing. I've grown my beard out plenty of times. So I've grown a mustache out before too. We'll show that how it come up here in a second. Get the new Manscaped beard Hedger Pro Kit. I love it. I use it. Just trim my beer at manscaped.com. 20% uh, off and free shipping using promo code GOBLUE. I could have used it last year, Jack, when I had that mustache. I could have kept that thing in line, in line a little bit. But that's from uh, fall season. I, I went uh, uh, 64 days without shaving my mustache. That is the picture there. Harbaugh likes to feel the love. Okay? If you think back uh, to 2000, there was a book by John Bacon, kind of a squirrely guy, but pretty good author, um, about – what happened, how Michigan ended up hiring Brady Hoke after the 2010 season and not Jim Harbaugh. One of the quotes that stuck with me a decade plus later uh, is, I just, from Dave Brandon, the Michigan Athletic Director, they talked at some point, but I just wasn't feeling the love. Jim Harbaugh at the time, end of the 2010 season, was the hottest coach in college, hottest coach for NFL jobs. His alma mater came calling, but he wasn't feeling the love from Dave Brandon, who kind of had an ego there. I think Santa, Santa Ono, I think he stroked that ego. Jim, you are so valuable. You are the coach I want. I need you here, Jim. I just got on the job. I need you as my coach, Jim. Um, and I think that's what happened in their meeting last Thursday. Now, what I think is kind of shaken out and why it went up to Santa Ono is I think Jim Harbaugh wants more control of this program, right? He wants to win a national title. I think Michigan was right there this year. I think they played Georgia. I don't think they would have won. I don't think they would have won given what I saw from Georgia. And I think Michigan's track record in postseason games, right? Jim Harbaugh, Lost five straight, uh, or is it six straight now? Um, but I think that uh, they they could have kept it within uh, 10 points, maybe 14, and they would have been like, okay, we're right there. We're just like two transfers away. And I don't think he thinks Ward Manuel is the athletic director that can get Michigan there, right? Not 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 pushing the envelope, not getting donors to donate to NIL, not doing whatever he needs. Hell, private jets who could visit more recruits. I don't think he thinks that Ward Manuel is going to bat and doing the things that Alabama and Georgia and Ohio State's ADs do for their head football coach. So I'm going to ask you guys, put it in the live chat, put it down in the comments. We're going to post this on Thursday. Grade Ward Manuel's handling of Jim Harbaugh. Now, they've been together for six years now, right? Crazy how long it's been with those two guys. But let's just kind of take the last two and a half years. Let's kind of just say mid-2020, as Harbaugh's going into his second to last year, a lot of contract extension talk. Michigan kind of got blown up by Ohio State back-to-back -back years. But, hey, Harbaugh's our guy um, up until the contract slashing half price and then the extension last year, but back-to-back -back years of looking at NFL jobs for Jim Harbaugh, A, B, C, D, or F. I'm going to go like a D 
D plus. I think it's been pretty brutal. Um, although Harbaugh hasn't quit or left the program yet, so maybe uh, I'm grading him too harshly. But let me know what you guys think. Give me an A, B, C, D, or F. Live chat. I got Phil with a D, Ethan with an F, Sean with a D, Carl Cordell, my guy with a D, Bayrola with an F, Roger Pack D, and then Loose Cannon, good grader, easy grader. I wish I had you for a high school calculus class. He gives a B, Brown or two times, going with a C. Noof Dog says D for dogs breakfast. This is what Jim Harbaugh wants. From what I have heard from people who have talked to him, I had a conversation uh, yesterday with someone who talked to Harbaugh's lawyer just this week. Okay, um, you know, I'm not trying to give away any inside info. I think it's just uh, some things that uh, people pass, and I happen to know if someone knows the guy. Okay, whatever. Appropriate salary. He's the sixth highest paid coach in the Big Ten in 2022. Now, that was in like salary, but when things shook out, you beat Ohio State, Big Ten East, Big Ten Championship, College World Playoff, all that good stuff. Um, Big Ten Coach of the Year. He ended up making over $10 million. So he was actually one of the top five or six coaches in all of college football with the bonuses, but he kind of had to earn those things, which I think is okay. I don't think it's bad to have that thing, but I think what's appropriate salary no matter what happens. Hey, I can have a down year like Michigan may face in 2024 when everybody's kind of basically leaving and Michigan doesn't have a quarterback. I don't want to get ahead of myself. He wants an aggressive and innovative NIL approach. Um, I could do an entire show about things I would do if I was running Michigan's NIL. Hell, how about this, guys? Would you donate? Would you watch if J.J. McCarthy with a production company like Chat Sports did a J.J. McCarthy postgame show on YouTube where you could take questions from him? Would you pay 50 bucks to access that? Would you donate money to him? I think J.J. McCarthy and Diamond Edwards together, we into one, Blake Corum, you know, one, two, the top guys in Michigan. You do a YouTube live show. You say, I'm not talking to the media. I won't even do a single media entry. I'm doing my own media. YouTube, I'm going to advertisers. I bet we can make J.J. McCarthy easily, easily fifty to $75,000 a month. Um, just through YouTube, through YouTube ads, sponsorships, and you know, ad sales, doing ad reads like we've done for Manscaped and their awesome new beer. But that's nevertheless, that's where I'm at. I think we can do a lot of those things. And a bigger assistant uh, pool and support staff budget. Michigan has kind of got there. For the last three years, other schools, Ohio State, Georgia, the same, LSU, under Brian Kelly, absolutely, have hired a lot more people for support staff, recruiting, NIL. Um, other schools now have an NIL department, transfer portal department, recruiting department where Michigan is kind of still holding up into like five, six people under one player personnel department. Some thoughts here that I've got to source on that the, the takeaways from the meeting last Thursday was that Jim Harbaugh, Santa Ono, Harbaugh expressed the things I just showed you on screen there. What he needs. Santa Ono says, look, Jim, I'm a man of my word. You can call around, call Cincinnati, talk about the head coaches I worked with there. When I gave my word, I stuck to it. I'm going to get you a salary, right? I need from you, Jim. I need a bigger buyout, so we have to look at the NFL every year. Okay, cool, cool. We got that. We got that. Um, we're going to get this thing done with NIL. We're going to make sure that things you just told me that we can do, we're going to get them done. Might not happen tomorrow, but it's going to happen over this next year. Okay, great. And um, we'll get it done. So let's kind of move forward. Let's meet with the NCA, which we'll talk about here in a second. And uh, as long as something doesn't happen catastrophic, we'll send a, a, a contract extension sometime this spring. All right, guys, we're going to talk more about injury updates and a position switch in just a moment. But before we do, I did want to ask you guys a question, looking back to uh, the history of Michigan football. I've seen this guy on Twitter. Uh, I follow him. He follows me. It's like, go blue pool one. I think I should give him attribution, but we didn't. Uh, he put some really interesting questions. I saw a few of them, so I made up my own. If you need a score to win, let's say you're in a Michigan football game. You need one score to win. There's two minutes left in the game. You're down six. You need, a, let's say, a touchdown. Which of those two quarterbacks uh, I think the most talented quarterbacks over the last 15, you know, kind of post Chad Henny era, these most talented quarterbacks for Michigan. Which these guys you put in behind center, for under center for Michigan or behind center shotgun? JJ McCarthy, Denard Robinson. I think people are going to say JJ. I think most people are going to say JJ, JJ, JJ. But Denard Robinson was one of the best in college football the last 20 years in fourth quarter comebacks. Indiana multiple times, Notre Dame multiple times, Northwestern. I mean, he was the comeback machine. And if you were down by six points, five points with a minute left, it was no problem. Denard Robinson could do it with his arm, could do it with his legs. I'm going to Denard Robinson until we see it from J.J. McCarthy. We saw it once this year, last year, and still was like by the skin of his teeth they got by against Illinois. But maybe that's a testament to J.J. McCarthy that he didn't actually have to have any comebacks because Michigan was dominating pretty much every game this year except for Illinois when Blake Corum went out with injury. Let's update the NCAA allegations that came out a couple weeks ago. Michigan and Jim Harbaugh are planning to meet with the NCAA very soon. Now, I actually thought as I got information on this last week that it would be today or tomorrow, but I haven't got an update from there. So I definitely want to speculate that it's going to happen today or tomorrow. But very soon, if it goes past end of next week, I will be shocked. All right, Inside sources expect Michigan to admit wrongdoings. 
I know some people say, don't admit anything, you know, do what Alabama does. Say we did nothing wrong. Nevertheless, that's not the approach Michigan will take potentially. Prediction, Jim Harbaugh will admit to some wrongdoing. He's not going to admit that he lied, but maybe that he just was less than truthful, you know, try to maybe cover up or, you know, get somebody's back or he else did something bad. And that he may agree to a two-game suspension if the NCAA basically says, Jim, you serve a two-game suspension. We could go up to six because what we did wrong, you're admitting to it. But if you admit to it, we'll give you two. And that's the first two games of next season. So we'll kind of see how that shakes out. That's my expectation from talking to Source over the last 48 hours. Let's keep it rolling with the latest Michigan football news. The Don. Donovan Edwards. The Don gets past ransom. Uh, we'll have a second hand surgery this month. Now, um, I was going to say this week, but I don't actually know if it's for sure this week. I heard originally it might be Thursday. That's, you know, whatever. But uh, I don't have an exact date. So it'll be this month uh, to repair his broken hand. Had one right after the Big Ten Championship game. Expected to miss four of to six weeks of speed and strength training. Michigan's offseason program that gets underway on Monday, but will be fully healthy as long as the surgery is successful, which it usually is. You ever hear a surgery that say, oh, unsuccessful surgery. It's always successful surgery, right? Um, and he talked to the media. He did some things this a week, uh, last couple days. Here's some quotes from him I wanted to bring to you guys. I'm just trying to go to the league after this year. Trying to get drafted first round after this year. It's in God's plans for me, wherever that may be. If I have to come back for another year, which will be 2024, that's God's plan for me. My plan right now is to go to the NFL after this upcoming year, which would be his junior year. That's Diamond Edwards. Uh, I believe that's, that quote was first put out by On3. They did a uh, kind of offshoot interview at a uh, NIL-style camp that Diamond Edwards and some of the Michigan players did a few days ago. So let's take a look at what Diamond Edwards did. Let's just kind of look back. Michigan's backup quarterback, who he himself missed like five games, was – you know, behind a guy who was overused in Blake Corm, still put up some huge numbers, right? Started the last two games of the regular season, uh, Ohio State, Purdue, 47 carries, 401 yards, eight and a half yards per carry, 75 yard touchdown, 85 yard touchdown, another touchdown against Purdue, uh, but didn't do that well against TCU, right? Had a 50 plus yard carry on the first run of the first carry of the game, and then after that, you see, you know, the rest, it's 60, 70 yards. And didn't score a touchdown. So, Diamond Edwards, we're going to talk more about that. More about his quotes, thoughts about him and Blake Corn. But did want to make sure you guys get we're tossing in the live chat if we can the link chatsports.com slash Don7. This bad boy is on sale for twenty nine oh seven, right? Well, why do we think of that? Uh, well, Michigan won back to back Big Ten titles. Number nine, right? I, I, we had to make up a price. We had kind of a price range twenty nine oh seven, two back to back Big Ten titles, so two titles, two wins of Ohio State. Number nine for his uh, his, his classmate. J.J. McCarthy, and then 07 for the Don. I'm going to model this bad boy. I'm going to step back here in the studio. Kind of looks like a gut. I think these are abs of steel, baby. That's no gut right there. Uh, the Don shirt. This thing's awesome. Very high quality. It's not a cheap shirt by any means. It's very form-fitting. A little more form-fitting than I normally wear them. But uh, you see these bad boys? You see these pythons? Uh, that is the Don shirt. Get it now. Chatsports.com slash Don. I'm going to leave this coat off. I'm just going to leave the Don shirt on the rest of the show. Keep that bad boy rolling. All right. Here's another quote from Donovan Edwards. With him. <clears throat> talking about Blake Corum, you see the bottom of the screen. We could have won the national championship. He was the key piece that we really missed to win it all. I think that's true against TCU. That is absolutely true against TCU. But bear with me for a second. Just ponder this for a second. Would Michigan have beat uh, Ohio State if Blake Corum had been fully healthy? Ponder that for a second. Because Diamond Edwards wouldn't have got the carries he got. They might have even played him because he got that big you know, cast on his hand. And... What broke the game open? Michigan was up by one score with seven and a half minutes left in the game, 75 yards. Then Ohio State comes down, et cetera, 85 yards. If those runs go to Blake Corm, I don't think Blake Corm takes us all the way to the house. And you never know. Maybe Blake Corm, right? That little crease. Maybe he tries to do one of these things where he's like a little shiftier than, than Diamond Edwards, who just hits that hole, top end speed for Edwards. Maybe Ohio State actually beats Michigan with Diamond Corn plays. It's crazy to think about, but it's just something with Diamond Edwards' injury that may have occurred. I'm not saying it would have happened, but I think Diamond Edwards was the absolute right offensive uh, player against the Ohio State defense at the right time that Michigan needed him, much like Hassan Haskins was last year. There's something to ponder right now. Make sure you guys are subscribed to the Michigan Football Report on YouTube. It's youtube.com slash Michigan TV. Um, another quote I saw from this uh, camp, it was Blake Corm and Will Johnson and a couple other players do a little NIL camp, coaching up some uh, some young players. He said this, right? He said, Miles Powell, asking about who's going to be the cornerback opposite him with DJ Turner and Jamon Greenlee. He said, Miles Powell, Miles Powell Jade McBurrows, a couple high-level three-star recruits from a couple years back, a year back, 
Amari and Walker, guys that definitely might be out there. We all have to work to figure it out. Who all and what our rotation will look like and who will play. Wait a second. Amari and Walker? Amari and Walker? The Notre Dame recruitment to some of the state of Louisiana. Okay. Amari and Walker? The, the wide receiver? Interesting. Interesting. I, I don't know if he broke news because they're buddy. You know, it seems like... That might be a shakeup. So Amari and Walker, who a lot of people thought would be in the rotation, right, with Andrew Anthony leaving, with Ronnie Bell uh, leaving, with A.J. Henning not being much of a contributor. Uh, a lot of people have pegged Amari and Walker as in the two deep, one of the top four or five wide receivers for Michigan next year. Could he be switching positions to cornerback? I think it would be a good move because Michigan's very thin right now at cornerback. Might have to rely on some freshmen next year. But if he makes a switch, we'll see how it shakes out. Might be a switch like last year. Mike Sanders still comes in. Michigan's maybe defensive MVP. Name for me, guys, your uh, the best Michigan cornerback ever. Not named Charles Woodson. Give me, uh, yeah, and Matthew, I see that in the live chat. Free tickets to the gun show. You got that right. I'm a skinny guy, though. I don't really have many muscles. Uh, I think it just looks the shirt's pulling off. But um, best cornerback ever, not named Charles Woodson. Uh, Jordan Lewis uh, potentially out there. Um, I think clearly like Marlon Jackson, Leon Hall you can make arguments for. Uh, but let me know who you guys think. Um, I see Marlon Jackson, Jordan Lewis. Ty Law probably is one of the really good ones. Uh, mid, to, to, you know, early to mid-90s, 92, 93, 94, left the NFL early, NFL legend. Lewis or Law, Ty Law. I think Ty Law has got to be the one. Um, although uh, it's kind of funny. There's a story back uh, at end of the season 1994, Lloyd Carr, Michigan's defensive coordinator who become the head coach, uh, told Ty Law, if you leave early for the NFL draft, you're not even going to get drafted. You need to get your butt back here. Ty Law turns out to be a Hall of Fame player. I think Lloyd Carr was a little bit off on that one. But I think the question I saw right there, Noof Dog, the reason I said that, I mean, you could have made an argument the last four or five games of the season that Will Johnson was the best cornerback in all of college football as a true freshman. He's going to be the best, in my opinion, next year. The best cornerback in all of college football. You've been making a case he's a two-time All-American when all things shake out. He could be your Woodson number two. He could be the kind of guy behind him. Or, hell, maybe he could be better than Woodson, but although I doubt that anyone has the ability to do that with Charles Woodson. But let me know the best cornerback ever not named Charles Woodson.